everyone and welcome back to my channel. So just a couple days ago I posted a winter bedroom tour and as always I got a lot of questions about my headboard. So the headboard itself is something that I made probably five or six years ago. I'm not real sure. Maybe more than that now but I made it myself and my husband had helped me attach it to the wall and it has been an awesome headboard ever since that thing is solid and sturdy. It was super easy construction and I absolutely love the way it looks. Now at one point it was painted black and then a couple years later I gave it a coat of white over it and then as you can see it's very distressed so it's got a lot of the black showing through which is my favorite combo for painting with the black showing through um, with a white over coat. I just love that so much. So anyways, it is a perfect fit for me. I think it is a very farmhouse and I love that it's got the shelf on top which I can use as sort of like a mantle for the room to decorate with. So all that being said, I thought today I would sort of walk you through and give you a mini tutorial on how I built the headboard itself because seriously it is really easy. Basically I use a 1x6, a 1x8, a 1x10, some molding of my choice and three Corbels from the local hardware store. I think I got the Corbels at Home Depot and the rest of the one I got at Menards. So it was really easy to make. If I can make it, you guys can make it. And I know I've got a lot of questions on how I have made it in the past. So today is the day I'm going to show you how I made the headboard. So I think what I'm going to do is just walk you in there real quick, kind of give you an overview of the headboard itself and the, and show you how I made the upholstered bed part of it. So the actual construction of the headboard itself, I don't have any video of, but I do have pictures. So it'll be kind of like a little slideshow that I'll narrate to you. So let's go ahead and get started. So here is the headboard that I made a while back. It's actually made in two different pieces. There's this top shelf area you can see here. There's like a seam right here. This is the section I made first, and then I added this section later on. To make the shelf, it was a very simple construction, and I'll walk you through it. But basically, you needed a few boards, some molding, and three of these corbels, which I believe I picked up at Home Depot. Once I had it built, we attached it directly to the wall. And to do that, we found the studs in the wall, we countersunk some holes. I don't know if you'll be able to see that. If you get really close, you can see like this little circle. This is where we countersunk the hole, attached the screw through the headboard into the um, into the stud on the wall, and then we added these little caps. Once the caps were on and I sanded them down, then I painted the headboard itself. Now to take this off, if I ever wanted to take off this headboard, I would just find these little caps, you put a drill in it, and then they pull right out. So basically, I have two here, I have two on the ends, and then I have the same thing over on the other end also. I think, there, oh yeah, there's one set here in the middle also. So I have one, two, three points of securing on each like section, on this section, and on then on that section. This thing has been hanging on the wall. I want to say it's been up at least, it's been up on the wall at least five years. This thing is still solid as a rock. It is not really that heavy in itself, but I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to go anywhere. So it probably did overkill in the attaching it to the wall, but it hasn't gone anywhere and that's exactly what I wanted. So then the next part that I wanted, I wanted the bed to look like it was an upholstered bed. Here, let me get all my pillows out of the way. But basically, I built a little box using 1x4s. As you can see here, I had one piece of 1x4 here, one that went along the bottom, and then one on the other side. So it basically made a box that this insert would sit inside. And then to attach these, I just nailed these on with some finishing nails. You can see here, this has been up on the wall, um, not as long as the shelf itself, but pretty much almost as long. And these things aren't going anywhere either. And I only have three nails on it. 
but it goes into a stud. So, to make this a postered middle area, I bought a very thin piece of plywood. I think it was like an eighth inch plywood. Really thin, really flimsy, super light. And basically, I laid that down, and then I put batting over it, and then I put fabric over it, and then I stapled um, the fabric to the back side. And then I added these buttons by drilling a hole and then pulling the thread through and tying it off. And I think I have the threads are basically duct taped to the back side of the wood. That's how I got them to be attached. Um, at the time, I only did three buttons, but I would like to take this off and do um, another row on top. And another row on bottom. I think that would look a little nicer. But for now it works. This whole panel is just kind of pushed in there. So if I wanted to remove it, I, all I have to do is stick like a knife in here and pry it out. The whole thing pops out. And then I can either change the fabric if I want to or like I'm going to do is add some more buttons. So as you can see, the whole construction is super, super easy. So next I'll show you how I made the actual shelf. I don't think this section really needs much more explaining other than what I've already done. But if you have any questions, please let me know and I will answer any questions that you have. So, let's show you how I made the top shelf area. Alright, so basic construction is the top piece is a 1x8. This piece right here, the length of this long piece, is a 1x10. I have three corbels. I have half inch round molding, which is optional for here. And I have this molding right here. And there's another board underneath there. Which is a 1x4, I think. No, 1x6. So we've got the 1x8 on top of a 1x6. Then we've got the molding and then the core bell. And then on the back side, this piece here is so 1 by 10. And then this is um, a quarter inch, or no, half inch, half round molding. I don't know what kind of molding this is called, but I had it, so that's what I used. To get started, cut a 1 by 8, 80 inches long, a 1 by 6, 77 inches long, and a 1 by 10, 75 inches long. Attach the 1x8 and 1x6 boards together with screws, making sure that the 1x6 board is centered on top of the 1x8 board and that one long side of the board is flush with each other. This will make the top part of the shelf. Next, attach the 1x10. To do this, center the board alongside the previous two boards and attach together with screws going through the 1x10 and into the other boards. This will make your shelf header board. Next, attach the brackets. First, find the middle of the header board and attach one bracket by drilling two screws through the back side of the header board and into the bracket. Repeat the process with two more screws drilled from the top of the shelf down into the bracket. Then repeat the same process to attach one bracket on each end of the shelf, making sure to insert the bracket at least one quarter of an inch from the outside edge of the header board. Next, using some brad nails, attach the molding to the bottom edge of the shelf. Basically, you'll be attaching the molding to the space between the 1x6 and the 1x8, making sure to mitle the corners when you cut the molding to length to ensure a nice looking corner. And the next step is to add decorative molding to the spaces between the brackets on the header board. This step is optional. But I chose to make a simple rectangle shape. After cutting my molding to, to size and measuring the corners, I attached the molding with simple brad nails. Next, using more brad nails, install a half inch round molding to the top edge of the shelf. The next thing you want to do is fill any of the visible screw holes with wood filler. Let it dry, sand it smooth, and then paint or stain your shelf and you are done. So there you go, as you can see, the headboard was really simple. I think what really makes the headboard is the paint technique on it. And I used a paint scraping technique, which is basically, like I said before, it was painted black, and then I painted the white over it. 
So what you do is you paint the white on and before the paint dries, like right after you paint it on, you take a paint scraper and you scrape some of the paint off. And sometimes you'll take a lot of paint off, sometimes you'll take just a little bit of paint. If you let the paint dry just a little bit, then it'll only take out little chunky pieces and that's the best way to do it. But if you're interested in look, knowing more about that paint scraping technique, I will do a tutorial on that if anybody is interested. Put a comment down below to let me know you want to see something like that. So, it was a really simple project. It looks gorgeous and I absolutely love it. And I know a lot of you like it too. So hopefully this video was very helpful for you. If you're planning to make one of your very own. If you do, please let me know because I would love to know and love to see pictures of it. If you have any questions on any of the things that I went over today, leave them down in the comments and I will make sure to answer them to the best of my ability. So thank you so very much today for stopping by, hanging out with me, and I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye!